it doesn't leave me and I feel I failed Dad because that was allowed to happen. Two years ago, after harbouring deep suspicions, Nolene Hoysler was forced to secretly film her father to prove he was being horrifically abused by a man looking after him. Clarence Hoysler has since died, but Nolene's fight for justice is far from over. I believe nothing has changed since Dad's criminal assault and we won't get any change if we don't stand up and make that difference. While the man responsible for abusing her father has been convicted, she wants the home to also be penalised. You flounder from one body to another body. Um, you, you go through all of the right channels and you still don't end up with anything as far as support, change. Um, so, yeah, you are. You're alone. Very alone. I don't think we got to spend many more Christmas with him. After I reckon that was probably the last Christmas we spent with them. On the other side of Adelaide, the Thompson family is feeling just as alone. They claim their loved one, Kevin Williams, died as a result of neglect. He ended up at the Boopa Aged Care Home in Modbury after going into hospital for a knee reconstruction. Kevin Williams died just 12 weeks later. I'm so angry and upset about it. It's just like it, it do, doesn't matter. It does matter. During his stay, his family claims he was given another patient's medication, wasn't showered for days on end, and was handled roughly by staff. He had fingernail cuts in his nose and his mouth. They, they had forced, he said they tried to force his medication in his mouth. It was only when he was moved to a hospital that they discovered bruises and bed sores all over his body. I seriously was nearly sick and I've seen a lot in my life but that was horrendous. It, one of his hips, the bone was seriously just sticking out, that's what you could see. And then his coccyx was black, the skin had died and there was a hole that you could literally see inside of him. He was just, you couldn't touch him. One of those wounds over his right hip caused his death. His death certificate confirms he died of septicemia from the infected ulcer. He also had dementia. Kevin Williams' family claims he had no bed sores when he was admitted to Bupa. From what I saw, um, I can only uh, um, assume that his treatment in, in Bupa led to his downfall and in the end caused his death. That's the report from the Aged Care Commission. The family took their allegations to the coroner and, because the home is federally funded, to the federal government's Complaints Commission. Most were thrown out due to a lack of evidence and investigations show Bupa did not contribute to his death. Bupa did give Mr Williams the wrong medication though and has apologised. The home had passed its federal accreditation the year Mr Williams died. For me, I find it abhorrent and the fact that there are so many people experiencing such significant and atrocious forms of abuse and we're not seeing prosecutions or any sort of redress that provides an effective remedy for either the victim or their families is absolutely atrocious in modern Australia. The number of elder abuse cases in Australia is on the rise and it's been brought into focus after a horrific report documenting countless allegations of neglect here at the Oakden Older Persons Mental Health Facility in Adelaide. Residents were over-medicated, isolated and abused. The government blames a culture of cover-up. I would describe Oakden as a house of horrors. House of horrors, it's not a nursing home or an aged care facility in any way. Um, it's a place that unfortunately pa patients go and there is no coming back from there.
Emano Serpo's family is just one of many lifting the lid on the conditions at Oakton, dating back a decade. I saw uh, residents being physically handled um, by staff members, uh, the outside areas, um, human faeces in the courtyard areas where the patients were either allowed to go on their own will or sometimes were put out there because they were disruptive or aggressive, so uh, uh, an isolation type um, area. His family alleges Ermano was constantly over medicated to the point that he could not stand and was physically assaulted. I believe that Ermano, today he should be still alive. That's what I believe, that he should be still alive. Despite being run by the state government, Oakden falls under the Federal Aged Care Act. It failed its audit in 2008, but since then has been consistently accredited as a safe home for vulnerable people. In my view, I think we need a complete overhaul of the Aged Care Act and we need to look at what we're actually achieving. This is not just about accrediting facilities, it's about looking after the rights and the interests of the people residing there. Today, the federal government launched a review into the accreditation system. Human rights lawyer Wendy Lacey says the system needs to be more rigorous and give more rights to those it's supposed to protect. Is Australia lagging behind the rest of the world on this? Australia is definitely lagging behind the rest of the world. But at the end of the day, there are significant limits on the scale of what accreditors are actually looking for, on the system of complaints and how complaints are handled. For the Thompsons, their main focus is finding justice for Kevin Williams. I don't know what my op our options are, but I hope that Booper stands up and says sorry to our family, admits their, their wrongdoing and say sorry so I can at least let Dad know that we tried, that we did what we could.